Bringing the dead back to life has been a dream of humankind since the beginning of time. But could revival ever become reality? Our cover story is reported by Tracy Smith. You've always been an optimist? Yes. Joe Tiralosi of Brooklyn, New York says life is good, especially now. Five years ago, Tiralosi, then 56 and in good health, was at work as a driver in New York City one hot August day when he felt sick, really sick. I just suddenly didn't feel like myself. I didn't know what it was. Uh, so I called home and I, I spoke to my wife and I, I told her, I said, you know, I don't feel good. I think I want to just come home. And uh, that's when she said to me, why don't, you, why don't you just go to the hospital? He walked into New York Presbyterian on his own power and promptly dropped dead. It was like they shut the lights out and I just collapsed and fell on the floor. My heart stopped and the nurse was, I heard screaming and that was it. But that wasn't it. Tiralosi was brought back from the dead. He says it was divine intervention, a testament to the perseverance of his medical team and the power of some bone chilling coal. Consider the Titanic. The big ship has gone down and the icy water has apparently taken its toll on the 1,500 victims. We know that today, if those people had been found, many of them could potentially have been saved because by virtue of dying in ice cold water, their brain and their cells would have been preserved. People who had died could have been saved if they had died today and if, and I say this with a capital I, if all the right care had been provided for them. Dr. Sam Parnia runs the Resuscitation Research Program at New York's Stony Brook University Medical School and writes that death really isn't a moment, but a process that can be interrupted and often reversed with the help of new techniques. Rescuers work frantically to find two and a half year old Michelle Funk. In 1986, Michelle Funk drowned in an icy stream in Utah. The little girl was submerged for more than an hour and technically dead, but the cold water chilled her down to 66 degrees, enough to stave off brain damage. Little Michelle woke up and, as Susan Spencer reported, went on with her life. Michelle remembers nothing of that awful day. Her doctors will never forget it. Today, cooling devices like this do much the same thing as that icy stream. They chill people whose hearts have stopped and preserve their brains until doctors can figure out how to get their hearts going again. So cooling somebody's body down buys doctors time to fix whatever else is going on and bring them back to life? Absolutely. Cooling buys us time. So for example, if somebody were to suddenly collapse and die at home, what we could do is go into the freezer and take out our frozen peas, frozen vegetables, put them on the body and try to do CPR at the same time so we can slow down the rate by which they're getting brain damaged. Hold on a second. Are you saying that seriously? That if Absolutely. somebody were to collapse, you could take your frozen vegetables out of the freezer, ice them and do CPR and it would help? Absolutely. Absolutely. But despite what we've learned, the chances of being brought back from the dead are still pretty small. Last year in the U.S., just under 24% of those who had a cardiac arrest in a hospital survived the experience. Outside a hospital, the survival rate was less than 10%. One of the reasons, Parnia says, is that emergency workers sometimes quit CPR too soon. It's harder than your tough workouts in the gym. So you have to go through this and you have to do it very rapidly. And if you do this for a while, it gets very, very tiring. People get out of breath. So imagine trying to do it for an hour. Compression machines like this one can carry on for an extended time because longer is often better. A lot of doctors will stop compressions after about 20 minutes. But we know from research that if you go on for 40 minutes to an hour, your chance of bringing people back to life is much, much higher. In Joe Tiralosi's case, it was all by hand. Do you have any idea how many different people gave you compressions that day? Uh, I don't know the number. It's uh, dozens, dozens, many, many people. All taking turns. All taking turns. And so after about 4,500 chest compressions and nearly an hour in the cooling suit, Joe Tiralosi's doctors brought him back, cold, fragile, but alive. What'd they give you that day? Um, I heard 
there was a, quite a concoction of uh, certain medications. Um, but I mean bigger than that, what they give you. Well, they gave my life back. They gave me the chance to live again. Sometimes people tell me, you know, being back, uh, what's the best day that you could remember? And honestly, every day is the best day to remember because there is, of course, no way to measure what it all means to Joe's wife, Janet, son, Joey, or daughter, Christina. He's here every day. I'm so grateful and I'm so happy to be with him. Thanks, honey. You're welcome. Life is even sweeter, it seems, when you fought death and won.